Um, it says we need to start normalizing therapy. We carry so much baggage because we never learned how to cope in a healthy way and sometimes are introduced to even more traumatic experiences throughout our adult life, but we shy away from properly healing. With a professional who validates you and helps you heal from childhood and current PTSD. Because we don't want to seem crazy or judged by our peers. And he, he was like, why are you scared? I'm like, I'm scared because I feel like I feel so powerful. Just everything that I just I went through in those freaking six, seven months. And now I, I feel like I'm really living for myself right now. And it's scary. Uh, yeah. And he was like, OK, why are you why is it so scary? I'm just like, because I don't know what's next. I'm not planning anything. I'm literally just going with the flow and doing what I want to do. Not caring about people pleasing anybody, not caring about my parents' validation, yeah, not caring about if I'm going to be lonely forever because I don't care anymore. And I was telling the therapist whenever, like inner child work, and I used to think it was so silly, but I used to, now I imagine my like eight year old self. And um, I, I told my therapist, like, I imagine myself giving my inner child this little ball of just pure, warm love that I've always wanted from my parents and just awesome. giving it to her. Like, I know it seems crazy to some people, but it's you not, need to do that work. Crazy. So I was yes. always craving that. And I didn't, I didn't even know until one day I was just journaling and then it just, it just came out and I was like, Oh shoot. You know, like what the heck yep. is this door? Yep. And, yeah, there you go. There you and go. you have to like, my advice, just be yes. as honest as you can with yourself. Cause that's the only way you can yeah. really break doors. Yeah. And then the next thing you said, which was so beautiful also, beside the fact of coming from a place of peace is that you you have a situation in which you can go create. That's what they're jealous about. That's what they're beyond jealousy. It's envy. They're envious because you can turn around and go like, oh, that's taken from me. I'll just, I'm self-generating. I'll turn around and create something else. Yeah. They can't do that. So they want to stick around and take your creations and call it their own and then go out in public and act as if everything is hunky-dory. Yeah, that's, that's an old expression. It's too you too young to know what hunting. No. <laughs> okay. All right, so I got to ask you about this post. The most important thing my ex husband has taught me, other than being firm when it comes to my boundaries, is listening to my gut. When I first met him, I knew something was off, but I couldn't put my finger on it. My instincts were telling me this isn't right, but I ignored every red flag because he was love bombing me to the max. His his family's well known, so it was just it, it just sucked. And um, he sorry, I was sorry, oh, and I was crying ahead. to my we're boss, good. and. Um, I was telling him, like, please don't, I was mad. I was like, please don't fire me. Like, I really need to go get my son. Please don't make this look bad on me, please. And he's like, hey, you know, it's your son. You need to go get him, yada, yada, yada. It was so crazy because I'm telling you, it's all mental because I felt like I did something wrong and I felt like I should have never asked him. So once I got like that confirmation of you're right, you, you're a piece of crap. Like, you're not helping me at all. So right. I was driving home and he texted me like three text messages saying like, I love you so oh, I love you so much. Don't worry, oh. baby. I'll take care of him. Wow. And I just threw my phone because I was about to lose my freaking mind. Like, who are you? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, stop. And oh, wow. um, he was wow. like, I was like, hey, don't worry about it. I'm already heading home. I'm taking him to Baytown to my to my his uh, grandparents. And uh he big message basically saying like, I don't know why you have to make such a big deal about everything. I was, I'm going to take care of him. Like, who do you think? Like, I'm not going to be that type of person. Physically, he never touched me. He's thrown stuff at me and towards me, but he's never put his hands on me. But what my therapist told me is like, he broke everything in the house. He wanted to hit you. I think it was just very, because in the first month of, it was hard. It was the hardest thing I, I feel like I had to go through even even you know leaving my son's dad wasn't as hard as this whole freaking experience. 
because when I left him, I had panic attacks. I had nightmares. I did not sleep. Like I, I couldn't sleep because I, I would be so scared or my, my nightmares would be like, I'm still in that house. And I would wake up in such a panic and three in the morning, you know, my friends would be like, what are you doing up? I can't sleep. So I would go to the gym, you know, I would read, I would bake, I, I, I would cook, you know, wow. just because I, I couldn't be at peace. And I felt like I just, and I felt ashamed of myself because it's like, I, I knew something was wrong with you from the get go. I, I felt right. something in my gut that was like, he's too good. This right, is right. not right. Absolutely. And I was like, you know, and, and, the, and that's what I'm telling you about social media, like normalizing this whole, like, if he loves you, he'll do this and he'll text you every 24 seven. Like, that's not freaking love. Like someone shouldn't be so <laughs> infatuated and so obsessed with you. That's not love. That's lust. And yes. love takes yes. time. It takes time yes. to build and, you know, build the foundation and everything. And he's just freaking love bombing me and giving me yes. what my inner child never had. So I was like, yeah. oh, yay, affection, yeah. attention words of affirmation awesome yeah. and then he just freaking took it away from me so i'm just like oh, okay great so i think i just felt more ashamed and betrayed and it was just a very lonely time because i used to you know like oh i miss him or i miss him but then i really like I, again you know you sit down with yourself and really be yeah. honest like okay what do i miss about him like really everything that i'm the good things that i miss about him were all fake the star he's back like, to you being yeah, the star yeah, yeah. And I, I, I completely agree with everything that you're saying if I can add Imagine. to something really quick too, no, you no, have to no really, and I told this girl yesterday because she messaged me about her situation. I was like, you have to really, really be honest with yourself yes. and be, and no one, and you're not judging yourself. There's no one judging you. So you have to really, really dig deep and, and write. And I, I like, I like journaling. Um, it helps me really be honest Good. with myself and awesome. be as raw as I can of why I'm really feeling the way that I'm feeling. And, yeah. you know, mine ended up turning out to be like my inner child never really accept, never really um, having my emotional support from my parents and my, you know, that, yeah. my parent, yeah. parental love. The biggest, biggest thing that people forget is that they are not alone. It says you want a person, not a project was a common statement today.